Hello. Good morning. Hi, Jim. How are you? Uh, not too bad. Busy. Yeah. How is it going? Uh, uh, we got about half of our uh, so far. That's good. One, two, three. Hello. Uh, Carson, yes, we can hear you. How is my audio as well? It's good. Internal speakers, internal microphone. So it's good us. There is a new WebEx extension for the Brave browser, which is essentially Chrome. Just to yes, install it. To hear others speak, increase your system volume. I think Carsten is not hearing us. Um, yeah, WebEx just gave me an interesting recommendation, increase system volume. And I just did this, and so now I hear you. You are shouting at me, but I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. So everybody can hear everybody. So I sent round, around an Etherpad link. Copy that to the... So just in case you wonder, Klaus is sitting beside me. That's why he hasn't uh, switched on the audio. And Ari is still over in the other room in the 1DM meeting, fixing some example data models which we were discussing there. So this is making interesting progress. And we just finished our first release candidate of the modeling language. So that that's a big milestone we reached earlier today, just for information. So anything we need to add to the agenda, change in the agenda? So maybe we should wait for two or three more minutes. Hi, Thomas. Hi, Carsten. Hi, all. So, as I mentioned, we are at the 1DM meeting right now and uh, standardizing uh, modeling lang a modeling language for data models and actually looking at some um, OCF and OMA data models today. So I think we wait until three or four minutes after the hour.
So there is a recording button here that, ah, okay, normally it displays a tooltip when I go there, but it didn't do that this time. Hi, Hannes. Uh, the, the agenda is visible in the Ether patch, the link for which I just sent around again on the WebEx chat. So it looks like this will be a short agenda because we, we don't actually have people for the CoreConf and, and the Schic uh, uh, item today. Anything else we should add to the agenda? So who who is calling user two? Somebody dialed in by phone. Yeah, I, I think that, that that's me, Mom Luca there. Ah, hi. Good, so let's quickly run through this. Um, talking about document uh, status, the uh, multi-part content format is in the RSC editor queue, so that, that's uh, another uh, document that, that we have uh, completed. Uh, the resource directory is in the, uh, continues to be in the AD aviation, which I think is kind of normal because it's not a short document and it does raise a few uh, questions. Um, the CNML Edge, Ari just told me I can report uh, he is working on, on the remaining uh, issues. Uh, as you may know, Ari is uh, not actually working these days because he has a a recent child, and he still couldn't tell me what, what's his name. So uh, they probably will spend the next uh, few days uh, finding a name for him. So if you have uh, suggestions, you can still send them uh, to him. Uh, so Cinema Edge should should become ready in, in a couple of weeks. Um, hop limit, uh, we, we will have a, a short item uh, as a next agenda item. And uh, uh, I think we, we, we are all done with this uh, document, but there, there is an obstia review that is uh, questioning why we are not making a stronger recommendation um, about uh, actually using this. So let, let's talk about that um, in a couple of minutes. Uh, the echo request tag document is in post working group last, last call processing. And uh, Francesca has uh, submitted a new review. Probably some, some of the feedback you got from that, Francesca, was in the hallways here in, in the building. Uh, do you have any news from that? Do you mean if I've heard from the authors or? Yes, I ran into John this morning. Uh, I should have asked him. 
Yeah, I, I don't know. I assume they've seen it, but I, yeah, I haven't talked to them. Okay. I think this this was a good review, so we, we certainly want to make sure that the authors uh, uh, have a, a chance to, to work on this. And if, if other people are um, interested in, in the points that Francesca raised, uh, uh, of course, you can also make yourself uh, heard. So I think that, that we will have to wait for the authors to react on that. Um, send them in more units is in working group last call for another week. Um, so, so far I haven't heard anything, but uh, I, I wouldn't mind uh, getting um, some uh, feedback when people have read this really short document, uh, whether they like it or what uh, needs to be uh, fixed. So these are the, the current documents that, that are actually in, in some uh, processing state. Um, I see that the CoreConf documents uh, have recently, or some of them have recently been updated, and I expect the, the rest of them to be updated in, in sync. So any day now, we should be able to do the working group last call, unless uh, uh, somebody has a problem with that. And the other item that, that I put on the agenda provisionally, the cope uh stuff, that's not something that happens in this working group, but it happens in the IP WAN working group. And they are defining a way to process the, the uh, COIP uh, protocol, in particular to compress it. And of course, we should make sure that, that this compression scheme doesn't have any properties that, that uh, restrict us in, in the further development uh, of the protocol um, and so on. So it, it's important for us to actually review uh, this. I, I know that some reviews have already uh, happened uh, behind the scenes. And uh, um, yeah, if you are interested in the query protocol itself, uh, that's one, one document that's uh, recommended uh, for reading. And I forgot uh, to put on the name there, I do that uh, in a minute. So that's document status. Any other document that uh, you want to declare missing? Or... Oh, I, I, uh, in the email uh, with the agenda uh, earlier today, I mentioned that uh, for stateless, uh, we, we are actually waiting for um, a new submission. And uh, once we have that, uh, we uh, probably will also proceed with this document. Any other documents that you care about? Good. So let's talk about hop limit. Uh, Carsten, uh, sorry, uh, Hannes here. Um, I was wondering, um, I had submitted this uh, local base name in CNML um, because we needed some functionality in the like with M to M, as you know, um, because we got a few things uh, wrong, a misunderstanding. Um, and I was wondering how I should best proceed with that. Right. We had a discussion in the face-to-face -face meeting, and, and my impression was that, that uh, uh, th there was something like, like a way forward out of that. Um, discussion. Okay, I would check the meeting minutes then. Now, let, let me quickly have a look. Uh, one or five. Yeah, so uh, what the minutes say that uh, th there was a sense in the room that we need to solve this. And uh, th there was also another document from Ari. And uh, I was kind of assuming that, that uh, Ari and you are going to get together and, and uh, find out uh, what, what the next step 
mm. uh, sorry, yeah. because there, there are some uh, architecture requirements on on doing this. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah. Now again, Ari is in in uh, parental leave right now, so that that may not be easy to do. Uh, on the other hand, he is in the next room, so uh, I probably can go over and, and poke him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I didn't saw his um, document as an alternative solution, but uh, it added some extra. Um, it, 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 I call it complementary. But uh, yes, uh, if you could talk to him, that would be great. Yeah, we do. Hannes, um, Jaime here, just a very quick comment. The local base name that you use there, is that the the path? It looks like the part of the path for the, in example at least, for the temperature measurement. So it, it, it wouldn't be a base name, right? Um, it's probably- Or maybe I'm missing something, maybe I should read it more thoroughly. Yeah, it's probably a longer discussion, but um, the idea is that you don't have to, or you don't send a unique um, a base name because the uniqueness is uh, implied by its use. And we somehow had to distinguish it from, um, from the other base name. So that's why I called it local base name, but um, yeah. So I, I don't know if other people sort of got that wrong. Um, we, as you know, like in Lightweight like M2M in the group, the group didn't notice it until someone pointed it out, uh, unfortunately, after the document was published. So I, I suspect in the introp events, uh, everyone ha has gotten that wrong. So, and the introp event takes place next week. So I will be able to tell more next week. Okay, so okay. Thank you. would be a good thing to um, actually get some, get a little bit of progress this week so you can take it to the intro event. Yep. Thank you. So anything else on document status? Okay, so let's, let's talk about hop limit. Um, we, we had a discussion about uh, the, the intended usage of the hop limit uh, uh, document, that section 1.1 1 .1, uh, in, in the uh, document now. And um, since this has been developed for a specific application, uh, one, one uh, way to read this document would have been to say, oh, this, this is just for, for dots. Uh, signaling and and uh, nobody else uh, cares about this. Uh, but what the the section 1.1 1 .1, um, of the document is, is trying to say is uh, this is a, a general uh, a functionality and um, it's actually now recommended uh, to to implement. And um, there, there was a comment from Scott Bradner as, as part of the uh, operations area directorate review uh, that this might even be too weak and uh, we really should always send this uh, 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 and so on. And what I would like to, to uh, find out uh, in, in this meeting is um, is the, the text that we have um, in uh, the current document actually the, the consensus of the working group? Uh, or in other words, uh, should we try to push back on, on um, Scott Bradner's uh, comment? Or do we actually agree that, that uh, the language here actually should be even uh, stronger and we, we might even include something about updating uh, 7252 uh, for for this uh, requirement. So I, I would like to hear uh, whether people think the, the text is, is what we want or um, we should change it or make it weaker, maybe. Um, at least from when I was reviewing the hop limit option, it, it was very reasonable uh, for loop detection. 
in the cases that DOTS was uh, having. But I don't know if people in Lagos and Twin, for example, in Oma have experienced the same problems. So I don't know if it solves any problem that, at least in, in, in Lagos and Twin, you might have. I don't know if it's their hair, maybe. Or others. You don't have the problem if you don't have proxies. Um, so um, exactly. I, I, I don't yeah. know all the, the lightweight M2M deployments, but I would expect that uh, proxies are not the usual way in which you run lightweight uh, M2M, except maybe for, uh, on, on the server platform, you might have some, some uh, uh, proxies going on. So just, just to, re ugh, just to uh, remind uh, people, I'm, I'm pasting that text into the um, etherpad. So it, it says the, the intended usage is general and um, query proxies are expected to implement this option and have it enabled by default. So of course we could use 2119 uh, language, an uppercase must or something like that. Um, on the other hand, uh, this, this is an elective uh, option, uh, so uh, it, it's a bit weird. Uh, we, we build it in a way that you can ignore it if you don't understand it. So it, it's a bit weird to say you must implement it if we also provide a way to to ignore it. But that's just the upgrade path to the state that we yeah, want to have. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's the the transition model uh, from from uh, the the uh, protocol as we know it that didn't have this. Uh, to the way that, that uh, we expect proxies to be run um, in the future. Uh, but th there's also weasel, weasel wording here that says, uh, if you know you don't have this problem, you don't have to implement it. So the, the cost is that uh, any proxy has to add uh, at least two bytes uh, to the message, whether it's exactly two bytes depends on, on some uh, details, what, what other options are in the message. Um, two bytes may, may sound trivial, but in some co-op applications that actually, that's actually something you would notice. Um, so it's not clear that, that uh, uh, we really want to have this always, but on the other hand, for a proxy, it's if you write a new proxy implementation, this is something you should implement. Any other opinions on this? I think one part... Just to be clear, even if it is a must, Oh, sorry. It is optional not to implement it, so it doesn't it doesn't hurt. Even if I mean, in any case, you can the, the developer the deployment can choose what to do. So, what is there a big? What is the practical difference? Well, the the, the practical difference is um, what signal are we sending? out there and right now we are using some weak wording uh, proxies are expected to implement this and by, by putting in a must this would go into checklists for RFPs and, and things like that um, so it, it is a we can send stronger sig signals if we want to So to me, it sounds good. I mean, if the if everybody agrees with the hop limit option as such, why not uh, making it more mandatory? Sorry for interrupting again. And so, also one part of the question was if we need to put uh, updates RFC 7252. So I think, yes, we, we should have some kind of keyword here. But I think uh, the general 
idea of this paragraph is right, uh, that you are expected to do this unless there's um, knowledge that is not needed. Not sure about the updates. Yeah, so the, the, the minimum thing we could uh, do is uh, change this I expected to uh, into must. Uh, I love either pad. So this, this would be one way of, of uh, sending a stronger signal. Do we need to talk about implementation versus enablement? Is, is this the same or not? Well, right now, the, the, this text would put the must on both the implementation and the default en enablement. Do we need to talk about the implementation at all? I have to admit that I never understood this uh, must implement, but not required to enable funny business. Well, it, it does give the the person who is configuring your system some leeway uh, configuring it off. But if you never turn it on, why do you implement it on your constraint device, for example? Because you you have to give the game configure the option to turn it on. Now, the, 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 if you actually write must uh, include this option or something like that, um, you create uh, another uh, effect, which is that a receiver can rely on having that uh, option. And, and I really don't think that's something we want to say. So receivers should still be prepared to accept crap uh, uh, messages that do not have this option. And not all requests must have passed to a proxy anyway. Right. So um, if this is a, a must, a must send, for instance, you could use the presence of the option to find out whether uh, the request came to a proxy or not. Is that our X forwarded for? Well, not exactly, but um, yeah, it has a similar uh, effect, and um, yeah, we, we have to decide whether we want to have this effect or not. So for, formally speaking, the, the document is not in our hands as, as a working group. Uh, right now, but of course we have to to uh, get some resolution of of Scott Bradner's uh, comment, preferably before uh, the the uh, operations management AD puts in their their vote. Um, so uh, we we could send in an indication of direction that that we want to turn this into a must implement. But uh, keep the the question of uh, having it enabled open. So is that what you want to do? Two bytes. Okay, um, yeah, I think uh, I go forward with less resistance to, to Scott Brenner's uh, uh, comment than I thought. So we, we would be happy with replacing I expected to with must. Uh, Karsten, another comment on the hop limit. What happens with the, the comment about section 6.2 about the options? He says that maybe we have to extend the table in the RC. I don't know if that should be something for the group or if maybe we could discuss that later. But. 
Yeah, I think that that's a, a, more of a general observation. Uh, we we have this uh, weird situation that uh, the the option number actually expresses the value of the C, U, and N bits, uh, while the the R um, bit and uh, the uh, data type, which by the way is missing in this table, interesting. Um, should be in there. Interesting. I didn't notice that. The data type is missing. Uh, anyway, um, the the R bit and the data type um, are actually uh, pieces of information that you have to find in the specification reference from the registry. And um, the, the CU at N bits, of course, you can also find in the specification reference from the registry, but they are also expressed in the uh, option number. And I think Scott's uh, comment was uh, that really all this information should be in the registry. And uh, that's not not uh, something I would uh, strictly deny. Uh, that would, the registry would be more useful with all that information in it. But that, that's a change that, that that's kind of orthogonal to to this document. I can add a paragraph to my upcoming core parameters draft. Uh huh. But uh, adding some notes to the Etherpad would be helpful. Yeah. And by the way, in uh, hop limit dash o six, um, these um, things are fixed. Oh, I'm looking into the wrong version. I'm sorry. Can you say more about this upcoming draft? I, I, don't uh, know I already about. presented that once in a core interim, and it just uh, overhauls all the IN RSS feeds of uh -huh. the core. Um, but there were many open questions. Yeah. Right. Is, is that a formal draft? Because that would be useful in answering. Not yet. Mm -hmm. Do you have a timeline for preparing that? Probably not before the next IP. You remember when you presented that? Mm. Uh, give me a few seconds and I will add it to the guide. Okay. Great. Okay, anything else about this upstairs review? As far as I know, we, we don't have any other of the directorate uh, reviews yet. Yeah, th there's only this, this review from the, uh, the SEC uh, security directorate that is it was, um, only uh, editorial, uh, I would say, modification. There is no nothing, nothing um, I would say, um, problematic there. Yeah, coming back to, the, to this comment from Klaus about updating RFC uh, 7252, uh, I, I don't think we, uh, we formally uh, update that RFC, so I, I, I don't think we need to reopen that, 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 that point again. Yeah, I think it, what, what we want to do now, because it's not our document at the moment, is just uh, define the red lines within the working within which the working group can move. So if if any of of the AD says yes, uh, this should be an update, uh, then we can uh, uh, just react by saying okay, let's do that. Um, just making sure that, that we don't do something that, that the working group wouldn't want us to do. So the, the sectia. 
The sexy one is still pending. The gin art one. The gen art one has been submitted, but uh, in the data tracker, I don't find the sexy. Uh, there is, yeah, I can, I can send you the, the pointer. <clears throat> By Roger Perlman? Yes. Oh, okay. Because that, that's not in the data tracker yet. Okay. That's always very confusing. <laughs> Okay, but I think we are good now, so we know what uh, we want to do here. Any other comments on that document? Uh, sh sh should I release a new version with this uh, mass modification, or should we wait uh, before we hear back from the discussion you, you, you may have with, the, with Scott? I think it would be good to have the the actual reactions of the ARI directors because the directory reviews are really just for, for the hands of the ARI directors. Um, so uh, I will probably reply to, to Scott, send another reply to Scott saying that we discussed this in the working group and, and uh, we, we are ready to go for a must uh, here. And uh, but but I think you should update the document when the area directory says whether they they want us to do this or not. Okay. Okay. With that, we are already through the agenda. Oh, any other business? Um, there are two more interims before the the Singapore meeting. There's also one on November 13, but I think most people are uh, in, in some form of travel state at this point, so we, we cannot usefully have a, an interim on the 13th. Um, so, um, yeah, as I wrote in, in the uh, agenda mail, that there are a few items that... Uh, we need to do. Um, unfortunately, Michael Costa cannot talk about, couldn't talk today about the PubSub uh, thing because he's in yet another telephone conference uh, at the moment. Um, so th that's definitely one item we want to discuss. Um, I think we want to discuss the, the uh, group communications uh, work. Yes, and um, they, there was some plans made in Montreal for having a short workshop on the topic Yes. Uh, here in Sista. And uh, I sent out a study poll uh, a couple of months ago, and that indicated that uh, the week of October 16th would be best for, for everyone who had filled out the study poll. Um, so Marco and Ricard and Francesca uh, Pick uh, Monday and Tuesday of that week, and then use the interim on the 16th to get wider feedback. Sounds great to me. Thanks for raising this up, Klaus. Uh, just to give also more uh, information for. Oh, uh, just sorry. Also, <laughs> thanks. More information for the other part. Uh, this is not only about group of score, but actually mostly on two other drafts uh, in core related to group communication. So the group discovery with the resource directory and the responses over multicast. That's all. I thought you had uh, 10,000 more drafts somewhere. Yeah, but they are in, all in A's. And, uh, uh, my, my guess from your doodle request was about those two in particular as uh, not adopted documents. But uh, yeah, we can check if there are more that we are forgetting. <laughs> I think it would be good if, if uh, you would be uh, discussing these uh, together so, so you make sure they actually fit 
well to each other. Uh, but yes, we, we have a lot of work to do in the core work group. It's not just the ACE work, it's the core work uh, that needs to be done, and it would be great to, to have a meeting for that. Okay, so th this means that the the uh, interim on the 16th um, could discuss this. And the other thing that, that we probably want to push forward a little bit is Coral. When is the ID cut off? The November 4th. Yeah, so on the 30th, we can still do useful things. That sounds like a good plan. Okay. Any other business? So thank you all for coming and hopefully see you on the 16th. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.